Today I want to share with you uh, something a little bit different. This is a way of practicing that uh, Scott Henderson showed me. And to be honest, I've never seen it anywhere in any uh, book or any video. But it's a great way to learn how to improve your uh, playing over changes. So uh, we got Stella by Starlight, uh, the first eight bars. You obviously want to practice the whole tune, but for time's sake, we're doing the first eight bars. So uh, I'll show you the concept. What you do is you decide on which scales you're going to play first uh, on each chord. Then the idea is to play an idea or a motif and keep that motif going in a certain direction, up or down. Sorry, I got the construction workers outside, so bear with us. Uh, and since Stella by Starlight, the changes are pretty tricky. You can't just play one key over the whole thing. You have to kind of adjust the scales uh, that corresponds with the chords, right? So you have to think about what scale you're playing and what note you're playing. And that's the what we're going to practice here is we're going to be aware, awareness of how the note you're playing relates to the chord you're on, okay? So let's say I start on the root on the first chord. I'm going to play half notes just going up, ascending. So when the we arrive at the second bar of H A7, I have to find the closest note to the previous note in the direction I'm going, right? So if I'm starting on E, I can play an F sharp or an F. The next closest note would be G, which is the flat seven. Right? So that's the that's the challenge is to be aware of the next note ascending if you're going up. So just, let me just play this example and you hear so what it root, sounds like. Nine, flat seven. So if you're new to this way of practicing, you want to create a backing track that is way slower than this one. You, If you have a loop pedal or something, make it ridiculously slow. That's actually a good thing to practice anyway, to be able to play a standard at a super slow tempo. It's not, it's easier uh, or harder than you think. So when we're practicing this way, what's happening is that we're uh, practicing our ears to hear uh, the next note and the changes. We're practicing our ability to uh, think of how the note relates to the chord we're on but the main purpose of this kind of practicing is to the idea that when you're soloing, you don't want the chord to, to dictate what you're playing. You want it to be the other way around. The idea that you're playing, in this case, a very simple idea. We're just playing something that going, is going up. But let's say there's a really tricky chord there that you don't really, you're not super sure of what to do over it, like the A flat seven there. You all oh, said A flat mixolydian or something. I'm not sure. You, you haven't really worked on that chord. So every time that chord shows up, you're going to move to a place where you're comfortable on the fretboard. This is kind of a beginner's mistake, right? So, but then you sacrifice the musical idea that you had, which was something going up. If you think of the audience listening, they even if they don't know anything about jazz, they hear something that's going up. If you start an idea like that, they want to keep that going. So you, we're practicing that, right? So, and some of you might say, well, I don't want to be thinking about the notes and how it relates to the chord when I'm playing. I just want to be able to hear stuff. But as I've said before, we're not, playing now we're not we're not performing we're practicing something so once you get better at this then you put that aside and then it becomes part of you right uh, so you have to be able to do this 
uh, in real time. So don't just memorize or memorize what I give you here. You want to start on any note. So I'm going to start on another note just to show you the difference. So let's start on C, the sixth of or flat sixth of E. Then you do that over the whole tune. Obviously, you have to change directions when you run out of uh, register, which is also a great thing to really practice playing in different areas of your fretboard that you're not comfortable with. So the most important thing here is the musical idea, the motif, right? So, and here's the thing, this is what Scott Henderson told me, when you do this and then you mess up, like you, you're, you, let's say the F minor is coming up and you're like, oh, what's the next note? You can't think fast enough. What you do is you stop and you think about it. Oh, it's this note, rewind, and start over and this time you'll get it right because you have figured it out and what's happening there you've learned something so you're teaching yourself you know uh, so that's really how practicing should always be when you're actually getting results right so it's a really good way of practicing obviously this motif is super simple but they should be simple. They shouldn't be too complex. Cause that's just, I guess some players could play really advanced motifs and move them around on this tune like this, but I don't think that's the point. So let's make the motif a little bit more difficult. I'm gonna play, start on the root and play a fourth down. And I'm gonna keep that going. So I, I have it written out here, so I'm, but you should be able to do this uh, without writing out, just doing it, to, you know, uh, on the spot, as it were. So I'll play the next example for you. second line blank there so you have to figure it out yourself and obviously there are choices sometimes depending on what scale you're choosing for each chord so sometimes you might want to play a sharp 4 or a sharp 11 or a natural 11 so for those of you who are aware of something called avoid notes in this case I think the avoid notes work because you're passing right so you can play a a regular 11 on a major 7 chord in this case because it's going somewhere and that's another thing about this one once you get comfortable with this the idea the musical idea is more important than playing the actual right note this is something Scott Henderson tried to uh, make me understand I remember that that we're too concerned with playing the right notes when we're learning this stuff. We think that you always have to play the correct extension that goes with that chord. But you, if your motif or your phrase is strong enough, it doesn't really matter that much if the chord is the right note. So you should practice that way. We should also practice trying to abandon the correct note for the sake of keeping the idea going. So I'm going to try something here. I'm going to try to start the third example. Then I'm going to play fourths. I'm not going to care if the note are the right notes or not. And see what you think. Okay. understand what I'm trying to get to here that you can kind of hear the idea and you don't really care like the audience is not gonna go oh we played a flat six on a 
major seventh chord there that's wrong. You know, they only hear this idea. So there's two ways to look at this. You want to practice it, making sure that you play the correct note that corresponds with the scale that goes to that chord, right? But you also, when you feel comfortable doing that, try to just play a motif regardless if it's the correct note or not. So that's a more creative process, I guess. This like the two, the theory side of your brain and then the creative side of your brain. You should exercise both sides, I guess. So I hope you didn't find this too confusing and let me know if you have any questions or anything. Uh, all right, thank you. Thank you.